Blessed is the man who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. But the man who delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night, he is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. see the video anymore because we don't have the projection on the back so I have to wait to watch the video when I get home and see it I have a few announcements to make one of the first things I want to tell you about is our Bible school if you haven't discovered it already on the internet we're having Bible school every I think it becomes available every Wednesday is that right every Wednesday every Wednesday it's, it's available there's two lessons already available. Renee and I have been to Bible school twice now, and it was great. It's a lot of fun. The kids are going to enjoy it, even though they're doing it from home. It's really a whole lot of fun. And I'm going to ask Hank, kind of impromptu, he didn't know I was going to do this, to tell us a little bit about Bible school and how people can find it on uh, YouTube. All right. I want to tell you a little bit about the BBS. It's uh, different from what we're normally used to doing with uh, having all the children together, uh, running around, having a good time with them, and me getting to act up and play out with them. But this year we're doing it uh, on the internet. We're doing it on our West Union Baptist Church YouTube account. So just please go there uh, with your children, pull it up. We have day one and day two already recorded. It's there for your taking. And from here on out, we're going to uh, release it around lunchtime or so on every Wednesday. And we have three more weeks to go. So uh, you're invited to enjoy it. Uh, join us and, and have a good time with us. And we're having a good time doing it and, and hope you enjoy uh, watching us uh, act up and, and play out the scenes. Thank you and have a good day. Yeah, I think it's great. Like I say, Renee and I got to participate in it. You know, it does the songs like we always do the songs and then they do each part of the Bible school. Only I mean, you get a brief version of it rather than the whole long drawn out version, but it's still, it's really, really good. So if you haven't been watching it, kids, if you haven't seen it yet, look for it on West Union Baptist Church's YouTube uh, channel, and you'll find it there. It's really great. I recommend it to everyone. Another thing I wanted to talk to you about, what they just finished the 2020 Christmas in July. Of course, they had to do things a lot differently, like we're doing everything differently, but I wanted to give you some of the report from that. There were 110 families helped. Out of that were 280 children, 188 adults. All 110 families received a $100 food gift card from an area grocery store. 48 of the larger families received an additional $50 in food gift cards. And one family got an additional $25 beyond that. They had four families with nine children plus adults in those families. And they had 33 families with five to eight children plus the adults in those families. 20 churches or church groups helped. Seven businesses came alongside to help. 10 resource agencies and organizations were with them. Christmas in July, 49 volunteers, uh, but they were spaced out with only 10 or less at a time working uh, to get all those materials, those school bags and uh, food and materials home with those folks. The school and social workers and advocates and their resource people got all the gifts for the families and they were to deliver them to the families. So. Every one of the 110 families were helped this year. You had a large part in that. Our church gave a, a bunch of book bags and uh, I'm sure other gifts 
uh, this year. So that was that was really good. I'm proud of it. I'm going to uh, open with a word of prayer, and after I pray, then Mike and Tina are going to come and sing for you. Bow your heads with me. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful to be in your house this morning. What a glorious day. What a glorious place to be in the house of the Lord. We're thankful that we're able to be here, Father. I ask you to uh, just keep surrounding everyone with your guardian angels. Keep us all safe that we might come and enjoy worship here and, and serve you and love you. Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit be with us today so that everything that is done and said will glorify your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is in his name that we pray. Amen. My Cantina, will you come sing for us? This song right here is one that Jerry sent out to everybody. <laughs> I'm not Dolly Parton. <laughs> it's a good song. It sets well in your heart.
We're going to look at verses 6 through 9 of Psalm 17. Psalm 17, verses 6 through 9. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love, you who save by your right hand those who take refuge in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who are out to destroy me, from my mortal enemies who surround me. Now before we pray, I've been asked to tell all of you to be praying for my mother and his sister, both of them are going through some troubles right now, some sicknesses, and, and they ask for your prayers. So you be praying for them. And I'm going to ask each one of you, uh, if you have a, an unspoken prayer request you'd like to lift up. Many hands. Many hands go up. Now bow with me and let's pray for a moment. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you again because we have nowhere else to go. We must come to you when we have problems like sickness in our family and fears in our world and, and all troubles of every kind. We have to come to you, Lord, because you alone are God and you alone have the power to overcome these things in our life. First of all, we thank you for our, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for the knowledge that our faith in Him gives us eternal life so that no matter what happens in this world, we know that by belonging to you, we have eternal life. Father, I ask this morning that you bless each family here, that you surround each one of them, that you especially touch their hearts with your Holy Spirit this morning. And, and Father, for each one of those who are at home, I ask you, Father, just to pour your Spirit out in their souls. For many of them are there, and they're not in this congregation and able to enjoy the fellowship of closeness that we have here, but they should know in their hearts that we love them and they are just as much a part of us, whether they be at home or sitting here in this audience. Father, we ask you for healing, for strength, for protection, for your love, and to bless this word that it may nourish our souls and fill us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Psalm 17 is a psalm of David. And we're not sure exactly what that means. It could mean that David wrote the psalm himself, or we know he wrote several of the psalms. Or it could mean that he just commissioned the psalm to be written as the king. While he was king, he asked a psalm writer, a psalm writer, to write this psalm, gave him the subject matter. It was written as a defense before God against the enemies of David. In other words, David has these enemies who are accusing him and he wants to go before God and say, look, God, uh, you know I'm a good guy. And so you've been with me enough to know that I'm doing what's right or trying my best to do what's right. And, and I want you, Father, to, to smite my enemies. Uh, David wrote many songs like that where he declares his own righteousness while accusing his enemies and asking God to smite them. In verses 1 through 5 of this psalm, David says, Lord, hear my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. Though you probe my heart, examine me, and test me, you will find nothing. I have resolved that my mouth will not sin. I have kept myself from the ways of violence. My steps have held to your path. My feet have not slipped. Now, I wish I felt as assured about myself as David does. <laughs> David often is able to say these things, you know. Look at me, Lord. I'm a righteous man. I'm doing the right thing. Uh, and he, he felt that way. He thought that was true of himself. He did his best to live that way, I'm sure, as we often do. But in our day and time, that sounds strange to us because we know that all sin and fall short of the glory of God. We know that we fall short and that we'd be afraid to go before God with what we have to offer, wouldn't we? We'd be afraid to go before God and say, look at me, Lord, how good I am, because we know that we're not. But what do we have that David didn't know about? A Savior. We have a Lord and Savior who is perfect, who is totally righteous, who 
if we just place our faith in him, will give his righteousness to us. So David, though, he had a lot of, uh, a lot of pride in himself, and he believed in himself. So, I, hey, I admire that. And in his day and time, he probably was one of the best men that was around. According to the scripture, he was a man after God's own heart. In other words, he was following God as closely as he knew how. I chose the verses that we read today because they show us the faithfulness of God and David's trust in him. Let's look at verse 6 again. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. David believes in his heart that he has vindicated before God. He has endeavored to live his life in a way that would be acceptable to God, and he believes that he is righteous. David truly believes in his heart that he is righteous, so he, he feels free to go before God and ask for God's help. Because Jesus actually is righteous and holy, we too can feel vindicated before God if we have faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. God accepts Jesus' righteousness as full payment for all of our sins and gives us full redemption. Everything we owe to God is paid by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And when God looks upon us, if we're Christians, he doesn't see our sin. He sees the holiness and righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ. And in him, we are acceptable. Because we have the Holy Spirit within our souls, we also have the power to overcome sin in our lives. Now, we don't take advantage of this power as much as we should and we could. We often fall into our own uh, systems of being good and doing the right thing. We often promise God we're going to do the right thing and we think we're doing the right thing and, and we try to do it on our own and that gets us into trouble. But we have the power to overcome sin when we have the Holy Spirit of God in us. That Holy Spirit is what's his first name, Holy. And because he's holy, we have that power in us to overcome sin because he overcomes sin. Just as Jesus overcame sin when he walked on this earth, living a perfect life, so perfect that he never even had a bad thought. And that's where most of us get in trouble. We might can keep ourselves from doing the very worst of sins at least, but we cannot keep ourselves from having an errant thought. It doesn't have to be an awful thought, but just an errant thought, a thought that deviates from what the Word of God says. In any way, even in the slightest, is sin. And that sin would separate us from God if not for Jesus. We should endeavor to live righteously and to be an example of Christ in this world because Jesus has sacrificed his own life to save ours. We should endeavor to take hold of that power of the Holy Spirit and to live as righteously as we possibly can in our flesh. We may not be perfect. We may never be perfect in this world. But we have that righteousness and that power in us. Don't worry about that. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> Praise the Lord, right? That he would give us that power. Praise the Lord for those willing to shout. I wish some of y'all would shout sometimes. It sure will make me feel better. King David, without having that indwelling Holy Spirit, though, knew where to turn with his prayers when he was in trouble. He called upon God because he knew that God was a loving and merciful God and that he would answer his prayers. David knew from experience that if he turned to God with his troubles and asked God to help him, he could count on God to do so. That he could believe and trust in God and God would come through for him. If you're in a relationship with God and it is as close a one as you can possibly have, you have the Holy Spirit within you and you're communing with God through that Holy Spirit. If you're as close to God as you know how to be, then he listens to your prayers and he will answer you when we call upon him. When you call upon him, God will answer 
All we have to do is ask like David. God, give ear to me and hear my prayer. Any time of day, any situation you are in, you can turn to God. And when you turn to Him and say, Lord, give ear to me and listen to my prayer. He'll be as close to you as in your heart. And He will listen to what you have to say and what you need to ask Him about. And those of us who are Christians have even more assurance of God's concern because Jesus told us in John 15, verse 16, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. See, we have a promise. We have a promise here that God will give whatever we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. But what is the purpose? The purpose is that we would bear fruit, eternal fruit. That's the reason God will give us anything we ask in Jesus' name. When you ask something in Jesus' name, he's not talking about asking for a new Cadillac. He's not talking about asking for a Mercedes, if that's what you want to have. What he's talking about is asking for gifts and power and love to overcome your sin and to be able to be fruitful in this world. And when he says fruitful, he's not talking about apples and peaches either. He is talking about reaching into the souls of other men and expressing the God that's in you to them so that they can come to know him through his son, Jesus Christ. God is all powerful. He loves us and he is listening for us to pray. Let's look at verse 7. Verse 7 says, Show me the wonders of your great love, you who have saved by your right hand those who take refuge in you from their foes. David expects God to help him because he's had past experiences with answered prayers. And I dare say every Christian here, and maybe every person here, has prayed to God about something and experienced God working in his life in that way. I know I have prayed for the salvation of people and seen them come to Christ. And I bet some of you have done that too. But you can pray about the smallest things. I've been in places in my life and times in my life where I didn't have the money to pay the bill that was already sitting on my desk. And out of nowhere, I mean out of nowhere, I'd get an insurance check or something like that that I wasn't expecting. A refund on something that I didn't know was coming. And you know it would always be enough to pay for that bill. Even in the smallest things, God is listening, He is looking, and He is ready to answer your prayers. God has shown the wonder of His great love in the past, and He will do it again. See, that's, that's what David learned, and that's what we can learn about God. The more we depend on Him, the more we give to Him, the more we receive from Him and answer prayers, the more we know He's going to be there when we need us. The more security we can have in that. God is all-powerful, and He is the only hope of salvation, and He saves His people from whatever foes they face. Whatever foes you're facing in this world, whether it be fears, whether it be troubles, whether it be family issues, economic issues, whatever you face, God can and will come into your life and help you through it. All we have to do is seek refuge in Him. We know that He loves us and we love Him, so when we are in trouble, we go to Him in faith. We go believing that He's going to help us. Like David believed because of our experiences with Him in the past, we go believing that He is going to help us. We have faith in God that He is ready and willing and able to deliver us from all enemies, physical, emotional, and spiritual. And we have physical enemies like the COVID-19 virus and dangers out there in the world, you know. There's 
lots of people every day getting hurt and injured and sick from other things and all kinds of things out there in the world. But we have the promise that God can protect us from those physical dangers out there. He can protect us from those emotional dangers that we have too. You know, many families have problems within them. Many people right now are suffering because of not being able to live their lives like normal, like they've been doing. Many people are anxious and concerned about these things. But God can come right into your soul and let you know you're all right. And let you know that you're going to be all right. He has done it in the past and he will do it again. We can count on him for that. And of course we all face spiritual dangers. There certainly is evil in this world. But more than that, there's the temptation for us to follow our own way of thinking rather than focus on our God. That's a spiritual danger. But God can come along to us and bring His Holy Spirit into us and give us Himself in a way that will overcome these problems in our lives, these dangers that we face each day. Through faith in Jesus, we find refuge from the fears and dangers of this world. Finally, let's look at verses 8 and 9 again. Verses 8 and 9 say this. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who are out to destroy me, from my mortal enemies who surround me. The apple of your eye here refers to the pupil of the eye. You know what that is. That's the dark spot in the middle. It's where you see out from in Hebrew, though, this word, the apple of the eye, that's translated the apple of the eye, actually means the little man in the eye. And what David means by that is that if he could stare into the eyes of God, he would see his own reflection there. And you can do that. You can try that. Stare into someone's pupil. If you find somebody that likes you well enough to stare at you that long. And you can see your reflection in that in the back of their eye where, where they see vision, where they have vision. You can see that. That's what David wants. He wants to be in such a close relationship with God that he feels like God is focusing right on him and his needs and his worries. That's why he wants to be the apple of God's eye. He wants to know that God is focused right on him in his time of need. David pictures God wrapping his loving arms around him and protecting him like a mama bird protects her chicks. He'll do that for you right here today. I'm telling you, you can literally feel the arms of Jesus around you if you just call upon him to love you and protect you and keep you. He can do that and he will do that. Even if you're there at home alone and you feel like you're alone, you ask Jesus to come and hold you and I promise you he will hold you with his spirit in a way that is far above and far beyond what we can experience in this physical world. Jesus used that same metaphor to describe the love towards the people of Jerusalem that he had. He wants to protect those. He wants them to have faith in him. He wants to gather them under his wing, to bring them unto himself, to hold them close to his heart, and to protect them. David asked for God's protection from the wicked, mortal enemies who surrounded him. Now, we are certainly surrounded by wickedness and evil in our world today. I don't have to tell you that. And maybe there's more danger to us from the wickedness and evil that's in the world, at least danger to our spirit, than there is from this virus that's going around. However, currently our mortal enemy is this virus. But it's not all the people who are different from us. It's the virus that is a danger. It's not the person next door. 
You're thinking, well, they might be carrying the virus. They might be. God can protect you from that if it is his will to do so. But the important issue is you don't hate the person. You hate the virus. You love the people. It's okay if we hate COVID-19, but for Jesus' sake, we must love even our enemies and pray for them. That's what his word teaches us. God loves all of us and he wants us to carry his love to others so that they can be his son Jesus and place their faith in him and join his eternal kingdom. That's our purpose. Okay, we may have to do things differently. You might have to wear a mask while you witness to someone. So what? Whatever it takes to be a witness and to carry the love of God into this world. Has God blessed you? Has God allowed you to be able to continue to work and, and then sent you checks from Washington? I don't know why they did that, but they did. But you know, you can pass that along to someone who really is in need. That's what we're here for. That's our purpose. To show the world the love of Jesus Christ. And to bring them to faith in Him. We'll close with a word of prayer. And then you'll be dismissed. But before I pray, I want you to know, no matter where you are, no matter what time of day it is, if you feel a need to talk to Jesus, you talk to Him. If you're lost out there in this world, if you're lost and you need Jesus Christ to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior, just confess your sins, pray and ask for Him to come into your life. And He will. If you want to be closer to Him, then endeavor to do so. Make up your mind you're going to and ask Him to help you, and He will. Whatever your need is, have a burden that you're carrying, family member you're concerned about, we can pray. The Word says we can. And we can count on God to come through the us because He loves us. Let's pray. Yes? I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's okay. Um, we found out last week. Yes, that was her son Hoyt has thyroid cancer. Yes, Faith, it's okay. What? Your mama has an uh, injury to her stomach. No, my mama's dog. Mama's dog. Okay. Well, we'll remember to pray about that too. And I know all of you have things that you won't pray about. So bow your heads with me and let's pray, okay? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you for knowing that you love us and that you're taking care of us and that we protect, are protected because we belong to you. You have heard specific prayer requests, Father, for Hoyt. In the name of Jesus Christ, and you say that anything we ask in your name, in the name of Jesus Christ, anything that we ask can be done if it is for your kingdom. And I believe this was certainly for your kingdom. So I'm asking that you review cancer in Hoyt's body, that you restore him to his health, that you amaze those who have come to this conclusion that he has the thyroid cancer by what you can do and what you're going to do in him. Father, we ask uh, that you be with Mama's dog that you have bring him to heal. And Father, there are others out here I don't know all their requests, but I know you do. And whatever they are, I'm asking you in that name of Jesus Christ to touch them, to do your work and your will. And all of these things we ask in that powerful and precious name, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.